Hello, and thank you for listening to the NYSEF podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Fine, certified emotionally focused therapist, supervisor candidate, and director of public outreach on the NYSEF board. Whether you're a professional looking to deepen your knowledge of emotionally focused therapy, in a relationship and want to strengthen and repair your bond with your partner, or just want to stay connected with what's happening in the NYSEF community, there'll be something of interest to you in this podcast. I'm really excited to share with you my conversations with guests that include EFT trainers and supervisors and other professionals from around the world. So be ready to learn something new. Hello and welcome to the NYSEF podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Fine, certified emotionally focused therapist, supervisor candidate, and director of public outreach on the board of NYSEF. And we're here today with Carolyn McIntyre and Dr. Regina Bordieri. And we're gonna be talking today about their Hold Me Tight workshops. We're gonna be talking about the wonderful work that they're doing, uh, the history of Hold Me Tight workshops, and also uh, what differentiates their unique perspective on this very important service this, that they're delivering. So hello and welcome, both of you. Hi. Yes. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so nice to be here with you. Thank you for taking the time to share about this very important work that you're doing, providing these Hold Me Tight workshops for couples who are so in need and, um, you know, before we get started, I just wanted to uh, give you both an opportunity to just share a little bit about what you'd like uh, listeners to know about you and your professional backgrounds. And um, I'll just kind of go where my screen tiles are. Um, uh, Regina, um, yeah, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about you and your professional background, anything you'd like them to know. So my name is Dr. Regina Bordieri, and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. So I have both my master's and my doctorate specializing in working with couples and families. I started my EFT training in 2010. I did my first externship. And so I've done externship and core skills uh, twice and one and a half each and still working on uh, eventually moving towards certification when I circle back around to that but also chose to do my doctorate out in San Diego at Alliance International University to be more exposed to the EFT world and to really learn more about the model. Uh, other than that, I have a full-time private practice and I see primarily couples. I'm also an adjunct professor at Brooklyn College and I'm also a certified supervisor through the American Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. And you went to the uh, PsyD that you got was a unique program, right? It was, mm -hmm. uh, it really specialized in uh, couples and families. Do I have that right? Yeah. So um, I don't think there are any that have done that since, but the PsyD program at Alliant International is the only uh, a program that is a PsyD program. So focused more on the clinical that's accredited by the American Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. So it actually is a very unique program. Yeah, yeah, okay, great. And Carolyn, yeah, what would you like to let listeners know about you and your professional background? Well, this is a second career for me. I worked in television before I came to become a therapist. Um, I worked as a reporter, a TV reporter um, in small markets in Texas and grew up in Austin, Texas. Um, my father was a doctor, my mother was an artist, and um, moved to New York and finished a master's in social work at Columbia. And I took my first EFT courses in 2011. I've been a therapist for over 30 years. Um, so this is really my home. Um, and when I took EF, my first EFT course, I knew that this is a real home. This is a place that makes sense. It's the people are supportive. We're all there for each other. And this is a model that really does help couples. So before I had become certified, I got certified in EFT in 2015. I was off and running, bought the kit for the homey type workshop. Honestly, I didn't really know what I was getting into. <laughs> and, um, and I offered it to my spiritual community 
to six couples um, along with, I had a partner who did it with me who wasn't even a trained EFT therapist. But that's how well this um, is designed. Um, Sue Johnson is, and we owe it to Sue in designing this amazing, uh, brilliantly designed workshop for couples based on attachment that, um, and, and we'll get into the more of the details because I'm just telling you a little bit about how I got to hold me tight. Um, I did that first initial workshop and um, I, I, uh, there was a couple that broke up and I felt really bad about it. And they later got back together and saw me as a therapist and got married, a, a, a same-sex couple. But I was a little frightened, like, oh my gosh, this could actually open up, you know, what if it doesn't work? And then, and then so I got back to it a few years later. Um, and then when I got back to it, it, I really got rolling with it and did about eight homey type workshops in Brooklyn and three private ones and Regina, that's how Regina and I came to work together. Um, Regina helped with one of the homey type workshops, a couple of them she's helped me with. And then um, COVID happened and uh, we all kind of went into learning all this online technology and Regina approached me and offered to, to do this together. Um, and Regina already had learned all of the the technical parts of managing Zoom and breakout sessions because she teaches and- um, Great to have you know, a partner who knows all that stuff. Oh yeah, because I was still trying to get up to speed. So um, yeah, so we've been, this is our fourth Hold Me Type workshop that we're in the middle of now. Um, and we're gonna have our second, second uh, session with these six couples uh, this weekend. Um, they've been going really well and we have some terrific, fantastic feedback, um, testimonials that are on our website. Well, great, yeah. Um, I know that the, there's a lot of need out there. Um, have, you, have you noticed just as an aside, a, an increased need through the pandemic? Have you been getting more uh, interest in these workshops? I think that's hard to measure. I mean, I think that was maybe something that ICEP would, would measure. Um, there's both people reaching out, but then there's also people that pull back yeah. because there isn't in-person, um, aren't in-person things happening. Right, um, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you for both sharing your backgrounds, both fascinating backgrounds, yeah. Um, so let's dig in a little bit. Um, what is hold me tight? Uh, how would you, how would you, what, how can we just let people know, like, what is, what, what are these workshops? What's some history to them too? Carolyn, do you want to take that again? Um, sure. And then I'll, def I'll, you, then I'll turn to you because I'm sure I won't think of everything. And um, so Sue Johnson designed hold me tight as a educational workshop it's not considered therapy so everybody should know that distinction it's kind of important um, there's a lot of teaching and learning going on and um, it's an educational workshop that she designed because she knew that a lot of people that not everybody's going to go to therapy and there are a lot of parts of the population that will probably never set foot in a therapist's office but who could really benefit from this help. And it is an educational workshop because Sue has really discovered the science behind love, the science behind bonding. And so this workshop is really teaching couples and it's approaching them through sharing the research. Um, she provides DVD, PowerPoint slides and video clips of couples. And then we have the, the couples do exercises in breakout rooms just with their partner um, where they actually try out and in these exercises that are very structured um, and that walk you through basically what she covers in her best-selling book, Hold Me Tight. Discovering your, your demon dialogue and then learning how to <clears throat> reconnect when you get caught in that negative pattern. What is a demon dialogue just for people who may not know that term? 
maybe I'll let uh, Regina step in here and-, and Sure. So the Demon Dialogues are essentially the names in the Hold Me Tight program for the most common patterns that couples fall into in their negative cycle. So of course, EFT is founded on the fact that couples get stuck in these rigid patterns of communication that essentially interrupt and block them from responding to one another and to bonding emotionally. And so helping couples to start to understand what goes wrong as they're trying to connect with one another and what actually gets in the way and blocks connection uh, is a big piece of, of course, the EFT process, but then also the Hold Me Tight workshop. So the Demon Dialogues are looking at partners' combination of how their default style is in their negative cycle. So whether they tend to move their energy towards their partner and pursue or move their energy away from their partner and withdraw. And so there's three combinations that those demon dialogues can fall into. Uh, and of course, Sue has also named those uh, in ways that are helpful for us to give some imagery also, of course, to couples. So we have uh, for our pursue, pursue. We have find the bad guy, right? Where both partners are leaning in and there's lots of anger and blaming and looking at one another. Uh, most couples can identify with that pattern even if it's not their default, uh, if they fall into conflict. Then we have our protest polka, which is of course the most common, which is our pursue and withdraw combination where we have that real push pull that really pulls couples in and is really difficult when it's so repetitive but also the most common cycle that we see as a default. And then we have freeze and flee. I got that right, Carolyn, right? <laughs> freeze and flee, which is our withdraw, withdraw, uh, which is when we have both partners who are shutting down emotionally and withdrawing, uh, which really makes connection very difficult. And this is what partners are doing when they're in these reactive states with each other and they're fighting for what's important to them but it's the way that they're fighting for what's important to them through these different styles that you're talking about are what create this, what we call this negative cycle that becomes the problem. And we really try to make that clear that it's not, what the, we're not blaming either partner, it's this cycle that becomes the problem mm -hmm. that stops these partners from sharing these more vulnerable moments with each other because they're in these, in these states of self-protection. Yeah. I think that's one of the beautiful things about the workshop as well in the group process in the workshop is that couples really get to hear the experiences of other couples and not only get to identify uh, with things that they do as either a pursuing or withdrawing partner, but very often hear about experiences of other partners that mirror their partner's experience, right? And that can very often open up a lot of empathy and understanding for one's partner and really help with that reframe of seeing the negative cycle as being the common enemy, right? That they need to, to, to work around and overcome. And how often do you hear from one or both partners as you start to slow it down? Like, I had no idea that's how you really felt because all I was getting was this reactivity and I didn't know what the vulnerability was underneath. And then when you add to that in, in a workshop where they're hearing other couples um, and in our workshop, nobody's forced to, to share in the group, but people naturally start to, one or two people start to share, one or two couples start to share. And then what they're saying will resonate with other couples because these cycles are so universal. And so it's very de-shaming when you hear other couples struggle with the same things that you're struggling with, which is why I really love doing Hold Me Tight. And I really love doing the, the group format. Um, the, not only are the structure, the exercises very, very structured and really help you zero in on beyond the content of the fight, what is the pattern and help them outline it. And then Regina and I have like to make sure that we have um, enough support for all of our couples. Um, so, um, and Regina can elaborate on this, but we have breakout sessions for them. And then we have an assistant come in after a few minutes and see if they want some help. What I hear you saying um, is that you really are working hard to create safety in these workshops uh, by having 
enough assistance there to help couples when they're doing these very structured exercises so that they be, and it's de-shaming, it's educational, it's supportive, and that's a big focus. Um, Regina, were you going to elaborate on anything? Yeah, here? yeah, that support is huge for us, right? Because as Carolyn mentioned, it's it's such a well-constructed workshop. And the real heart of the, the workshop uh, is the exercises, right? In EFT, we're experiential, and we want couples to have different experiences of how to relate to one another. And the exercises provide that. So making sure that if couples need support or they want assistance or just to help keep them on track, uh, knowing that they have somebody there to help them with that process and to walk them through that uh, is something that not a lot of other groups, if any other groups do, I'm not sure about that, but um, we know that there are a lot of uh, potential other workshops that only have a few assistants. And for us, it's really important, uh, especially on the online environment, right, where maybe we don't have them in the same room and we can't necessarily see them between the exercises or on breaks that we make sure that we have enough support for them in those breakout rooms. Yeah, I would think that would be really helpful. Um, yeah, so, and there are things that uh, differentiate you, right? As you're offering these workshops, you've sort of tweaked it a bit in your own ways to perhaps create more safety, more uh, trust, more uh, to have it be even more supportive and structured. Can you share a little bit about uh, how, what, what differentiates you a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, as, as Regina was saying, I think the most important part is making sure that we have plenty of support for all the couples. And people are, couples are often reluctant to ask for support in the beginning. They're a little bit shy, but they we find that once it's offered and there's an assistant there they'll, they'll they will happily take in that help and often get pretty attached to an assistant or 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 to that kind of help um and so we really see that as as a positive thing that they'll get more out of the workshop and the exercises um with a little little help and a little support in the breakout rooms. sometimes it's easy for couples to diverge and sort of avoid doing the exercise. They might spend a lot of the time talking about the exercise without doing it um, mm -hmm. or diverge into um, content related fights. So the, you know, the assistants kind of help keep them on track and process any of the blocks that, that are coming up for them about, you know, in doing the exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other components are we've added some some pieces we added a piece on family messages which we think really kind of helps flesh out the workshop a little bit more and helps bring in a piece of empathy so what that looks like is um we talk as a group about what are the messages you got growing up from your families about feelings and emotion and were certain feelings okay to show and other feelings not okay to show was it volatile and stormy or was it sort of cold and icy what was it like and what were you know what kind of messages did you get from your parents or caregivers around showing feelings and how much comfort and nurturing did you get so people will share that as a group and then they do a breakout exercise with their partner around that and then they come back from the exercise and sometimes they're saying things like well i didn't know these things about my partner and it tends to help foster some, some empathy, which helps helps them in this process of you know, go understanding the the deep reasons and the good reasons why their partner gets so triggered um, by things that that happen in the negative cycle. What are these vulnerable raw spots that we all have? That's so important, isn't it, to help people understand where they had success or not with vulnerability as they were growing up and to, to make that explicit with each other. Um, uh, Regina, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, so just in terms of how we've expanded on some of the content, we also have an expanded section on de-escalation for couples, where we really try to make it a little bit more structured and explicit. What are so, some of those strategies for exiting your cycle? How is it that you call out your cycle? 
uh, and not just say that it's happening or name it, but also asking your partner to join you uh, in noticing, do you think our cycle might be happening? I think we're in it right now. What do you think? And just to so clarify, really, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. What a cycle is, you know, what is, what is this negative cycle? For yeah, so the negative cycle, familiar. yeah, so the negative cycle, right, is that pattern, those rigid patterns that couples get stuck in, where really they're trying to get to a place of understanding or being seen or being heard. But what winds up happening is that all of us, right, when we're feeling that somehow our value to our partner, our partner's ability to understand us, our connection with our partner is at risk or is being threatened, we tend to become defensive. And our behaviors are very often reactor, reactive and can come across to our partner as something that is threatening rather than something that is a reach for connection. So those negative cycles are really what keep cu couples and partners stuck in feeling like they're at odds with their partner, they're separate from their partner, they're at a loss for that connection. And so really helping couples to identify that and then be able to notice and step outside of that and to redirect some of those behavioral patterns. So that's a piece that we really have put some added attention and focus uh, and handout and slides uh, and that's also a place where we really appreciate the input of our assistants uh, that Carolyn and I have mentioned before for these workshops in helping also add some of the language that they've heard from some of their couples uh, in terms of what's made some of these rerouting of these patterns successful for them. Well, that is so critical in, in work that couples are doing and our work with couples is uh, to be able to identify these patterns uh, I think it was Sue that said, if you can name it, you can tame it. Was she mm -hmm. the one that said that? Um, yeah. And so, yeah. And any other pieces that you want to add here? Um, there was a, we've, all, I've also, we've also brought in some more content to intimacy, um, to the part about touch, intimacy, and sex. Um, so brought in research from Peggy Kleinsblatt, who, who did a landmark study on 75 couples that reportedly have a great sex life. And the research results are very su surprising and interesting, you know, in terms of how little they focused on intercourse and how much they were focused on just being intentional about being close and all the many ways that happens. And also bringing in research and information from Naomi Wolf, who has written um, a pretty popular book right now, Vagina, on um, what is the autonomic nervous system, how that plays a role in women feeling safe to be close and to open up and how that can affect um, feelings um, that go along with the sexual experience, whether they can really experience that in love feeling um, or whether it's just something that is sort they they go through, um, and then also information from the book the new male sexuality, um, and so Bernie and I can't remember the last name, but um, so we're we're bringing in other pieces that that can kind of help. Um, I love uh, I love that you're doing that piece. Uh, about intimacy and the sexual relationship, because that could have a whole nother sort of cycle to it that could be different than the, uh, the main cycle. And I, I think that, um, you know, this has been true for me. I've been working on this for myself as a therapist to, you know, to push my leading edge of growth here to ask. So many therapists don't ask about the sexual intimate relationship of our clients. And it's a really important part of the relationship. And so I love the fact that you're bringing that into these Hold Me Tight workshops that you're doing. We also do kind of sprinkle in these short meditation or touch exercises, touch then, then you know, like doing a self meditation of self love piece, and then turning to your partner um, with the eyes of empathy or with a touch, empathic touch, um, so that we're trying to expand the lens of beyond sex to all the ways that touch can be um, a, a part of comfort and healing and compassion. Mm -hmm. 
How long do these workshops last? What's the time frame of them? Are they a weekend, two full days of a weekend? Is that how it works? You want to talk about that? Richard? Yeah, so we've we've done them in two different formats. Um, we've done them with shorter sessions more frequently, either like two and a half uh, hours on weeknights uh, where they have been four times. Um, but we've been doing more recently, we've been doing blocks of four hours uh, on a day in the weekend, and we do that for three weekends. And we've been finding that that works really well to really help us uh, get into some of the material uh, to give couples time to digest some of what they're learning in the workshop and to see how some of that might be playing out in their lives between the workshop. Uh, and then another piece that we've also really focused on is this idea of the seventh conversation is about keeping your love alive, which is about how do we find ways to connect with our partner and all of those small things that we do that build connection every day uh, not just the big moments, not just the date nights, not just the vacations or the weekends away. Um, and so we, we sprinkle a lot more of that also in some, some homework activities. Uh, we give them some appreciation activities. We, uh, you know, teach them and walk them through eye gazing, uh, which then of course we give them uh, as a potential homework that they can do or things they can try between sessions. So rather than save that to the end, we're also kind of helping with that and encouraging that between sessions as well. That's wonderful. You know, these, these little things add up, you know, thank you for taking out the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it goes a long That's way. Um, uh -huh. Do you want to say anything about uh, inclusivity? You know, who this is available to, diversity, inclusivity, um, um, I mean, Regina, we can add to this, but we've had a pretty diverse um, group of couples of ethnicity, interracial diversity, um, interracial couples. And um, so it's exciting to be able to offer this because this is so universal. And same-sex couples. Um, we haven't had that many online, but I have when we were doing them in person more same-sex couples um but it's a it's an open door all yeah, are yeah. welcome yes mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and it's also you know we have couples at all different stages of their relationship as well i mean we have couples who've been married for decades we have couples who are relatively new we had one couple who had recently moved in together uh, so we've really had couples at all different stages of their relationship and of their, their lives. Uh, and it really is, again, that's part of the beauty of the EFT model and of the workshop in general, is that it really is so universal and it's, it really is geared and helpful for, for all couples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just uh, in terms of the structure of it, in these breakout rooms online, it would look something like this for a couple. I, um, let's say I was the, the therapist who was coming in to the two of you doing this work as a couple, um, I would pop into the room like this and just say, how you doing? Um, any questions, any concerns? Can I help in any way? And I could be available to you. And this is what it would look like, literally. Yeah, and we've had, it's always, of course, you know, just like with therapy, we love when we can have couples in the same location, but part of the beauty of the online is that even if couples can't be in the same location for one or more workshops, they can still attend with their partner because we can put them into the breakout rooms, just like the three of us are here, where they can be working on the exercise, uh, even if they're not in the same place together. So right, good point. So you might be in one square mm -hmm. or three squares like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But of course we encourage being together in the same room because we do have touch exercises and we do have you know things that they do with our partner mm -hmm. that are right. just as hard to do in person. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, is there anything else that you wanna to add to the work that you're doing, how you do it before we start to tell people how they can find you? 
I might just add that, you know, it's also really important for us that in order for the couples to have a good experience, that the assistants need to feel comfortable with what they're doing. Uh, and it's important to us that they have a sense of what the exercises are and where couples get stuck and how to help them and to really orient them to supporting couples in those exercises. Uh, rather than just giving them the exercises and hoping they kind of know what to do when they get in there. Um, so that's another really important piece, both because it helps the couples to really get the most out of the workshop. And also we, we really want assistance and we're always looking for good assistance. Anybody who's EFT trained who might want to experience the workshop uh, and learn more about the, the process and the model. Uh, and it's a, it's a wonderful way to learn about the EFT process. We learn every time uh, from the workshop, from our couples. And so for us, having that orientation and having assistants who feel comfortable and confident and really have some, some information going into those exercises is also really important on, on both sides of that. Great. All right. So how can, and you also offer uh, booster sessions, right? I have a note here about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, we have a fantastic website, I think, onlineholdmetight.com. So, you know, go to our website. We've got some wonderful testimonials on there, and we have been offering booster sessions. We didn't have anybody sign up for the first one or two. Is is that right, Regina? And, and then we had one couple sign up you know, for the, the third time we did it, but this couple had signed up twice before. So, so I met, so I met with them and it was actually a wonderful experience. They were a little disappointed that more couples hadn't joined because they wanted the group experience. But what was great was this couple was on the verge of breaking up before they took Hold Me Tight, which had been almost a year prior to the booster. And they were in such a better place. Um, it was just really, enlightening to see that improvement. So the booster session, that's wonderful to have that kind of success story. Um, a booster session is, is, is what exactly? It's kind of like, let's do a check-in and keep this work alive and going. And, um, you know, we, we will throw in an exercise to do and just to keep the framework alive of, of you know, teaming up against those negative cycles and bringing in more ways of connecting through touch, words, however we get there, breaking the negative cycle. And is that part of the, the package? Or is that an additional service? An additional, yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and part of what we are um, implementing, however, is that we've now built in a members uh, section of our website so that all of our couples who have done the workshop have access to ongoing resources. Whenever we update or add extra handouts, um, we'll be posting some videos up there as well periodically. So just continuing to try to also keep connected and keep some resources for couples that they can come back to, as well as the workshop materials that they, that they were given in the workshop. Okay, great. And how can people find you? We'll post all this information, by the way, in the summary but we can just uh, include it here too. Yeah, so as Carolyn mentioned, we do have a website. It's onlineholdmetight.com. And you can find information, of course, about our upcoming groups. You can request information or request to be on our mailing list there. We have a short intro video. Uh, if you wanna learn a little bit more, hear a little bit more about some of the seven conversations in the workshop. We also have testimonials on the workshop, on the uh, website. And so just more information and resources as well, of a, as well as of course, a place for couples to register if they wanna register for the next upcoming workshop. Okay, great. And is there another one coming up soon? A new one, do you have a date? Yes, um, in fact, we just posted it. The next one will be in October, the first uh, Saturday in October, October, October 2nd. Okay. So the ones we've been doing lately have been uh, three Saturday afternoons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay, great. All right. Well, this has been really a pleasure uh, to, to uh, get to know both of you and this amazing work that you're doing. I encourage people to uh, go onto your website and learn about this, these Hold Me Tight workshops. They're so valuable. 
safe, supportive, encouraging, and transformative. Yeah. yeah they really are. It's really, um, it's, I can feel so elated at the end. Um, and I'm, it's just a very exciting to see the transformation. And it happens very quickly because, you know, it's like a condensed version of, of the therapy, but in a very structured way. And it's a great opportunity to learn the model um, and really getting this by using these structured exercises. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, please reach out to us if there are anybody who's interested in assisting in a workshop, or if you have any questions about the, about the workshop, you can fill out a, a question um, box on our website and we'll reply to your questions. Mm -hmm. We do also host periodically, we'll have posted online dates where we'll do a free introduction to the Hold Me Tight workshop where you know couples are always, always encouraged. And sometimes we open those up to therapists as well who might wanna learn about the workshop. But we do these free introductions to give couples an opportunity to hear more about the workshop, to ask some questions uh, and to get to know us a little bit as well because of course it is a, is a process where we're wanting to connect with our couples that's a really important piece, um, which we also mentioned that we also do screening uh, with all of our couples before they come into the workshop. So it's a brief call, but really what our, our goal is, is to number one, make sure that um, couples know what the workshop is about and what to expect. But we also wanna learn a little bit of information about our couples so that if there are any ways that we can be accommodating or be catering to the couples that are in any given workshop that we're really aware of, what the, the, the needs are and what some of the relationship struggles or where they just are in their lives. So that's a, a really big piece for us too, is really wanting to make sure we're cater, catering to our couples. Well, that really speaks to your commitment to trust and safety. So great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.